Lastly, my mailbox was used quite a lot. Today's mailbag is a mixture of parts and kits, also with background information and a small test. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Let's start the opening. These are heat shrink tubes in different sizes. I think from 10 millimeters to about 17 millimeters and I like those. They are usually one or two meters and uh, I use them uh, quite a lot and uh, I also like the clear ones because then you see what's inside. If you use black or any other color you don't see it inside and it's quite good to seal uh, small devices. Also you can use hot glue gun uh, to seal the entry and the exit. So quite nice and I have a whole assortment because they shrink only about a factor of 50% so you have to start with the right diameter that it's really a tight tight fit. Next one. These are TCA 9548A and if you look at the pins here, you see SC4, SC5, SC6 and stuff like that. And you see also A0, A1 and A2. And this is a extender for I2C buses. From time to time I get a question, how can I connect more than only a few devices to my I2C? A bus and with this extender you can connect many devices. Now you can say I can also connect many different devices on one I2C bus and you're right an I2C bus can connect up to 127 different devices but there is one bottleneck. Many devices only offer two addresses and some chips offer only one. So all these chips have exactly the same address and only with such a chip you can connect two or more of them. These are low voltage H channel I2C switch. And how are they connected? You have one bus master which is usually our Arduino or ESP or whatever. You connect it with the SDA and the SCL pin. And you can select the address of this chip with these address pins here. And then you program the chip itself and tell this chip which slave you want to address. You can have up to eight different slaves. Let's have a look at Adafruit's address table for I2C devices. You see there are plenty of different I2C devices like humidity sensors, temperature sensors, IR temperature sensors, you name it, light sensors, everything is here. You find most of the commonly used chips here in the Adafruit table. I made a summary of these different sensors in Excel and I show you here now all sensors with only a single address. For example, the BMP 180 temperature and parametric sensor. It offers only one address and it's 0x77. By the way, the BMP 085 offers exactly the same address and in addition the BMA 180 which is not at all a temperature or parametric sensor it is an accelerometer also only offers this 077. If you have now a project where you want to have a BMA 180 and a BMP 180 you cannot connect it to the same I2C bus and this is why you need such a bus extender. Also, if you, for example, want to have two or three BMP 180s, also then you cannot connect them to the same I2C bus. You also need this extender. Next one.
This is a new version of Kevin Dara's trick board used in video number 234. It is a very low power ESP8266 board for many applications. He changed a few things to make it easier to program and he also replaced the buttons with more reliable ones. Check the link in the description if you are interested. Next one. These are lithium batteries CR123A3 volt and I plan some experiments with batteries because it's winter here and viewers asked which is the best battery for winter. I should get a few different battery technologies that we can check them out. And they are 3.26 volts. So the CR123A, they should have a nominal capacity of 1.4 amp hour and they should work from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees. But on the other hand, the continuous standard train is only 20 milliampere, is not uh, too much. Maybe we have to have a cap if we want to have, um, for example, a LoRa transmitter. Uh, attached to it. But the 3 volt is okay because we find mi many microcontrollers which run on 3 volt. This is where I bought it. They are not cheap. Four pieces cost nine dollars so one is a little bit more than uh, two dollars. But if they work in low temperature maybe this is a good solution for our outside sensors. And they are for sure not produced for the American or for the European market. The only thing I can read here is the Panasonic and the, the type of the product. Next one. Not easy to understand what it is, but because I ordered it, I know it. It is a reader. We will see later on for what device. Next one. These are the missing parts. This was the reader and these are the RFID chips. I didn't know that they exist. They are called RW1990 it is a special standard and a viewer also told me that these are nice devices here. These are chips made by Maxim Integrated and they are called DS1990A and they are called iButton and they have a one wire net so they do not have any RFID function or whatever. They just have a code, a unique factory lasered 64-bit registration code, and they are quite simple. They have just two poles, one here and one here, like a coin cell. And the reader has a contact here and a contact here, like that. The power comes from this one wire interface and uh, everything is done. So a very simple way of authentication. So this is an alternative to RFID. It is with contact, it's not contactless as the, the RFID, but it has a similar function. And this is a one wire interface as for example the temperature sensors and others uh, use also these one wire interfaces. The reader is quite cheap also, it's $1.22 and five of these chips are $4. So it's uh, roughly $1 for the pin and $1 for the reader. This one is a huge one. It was delivered by DHL and I think I unpackage it without the camera. You see, this is from Elecro. Actually, 
I didn't ask them for that. I asked them for this one here. They sent me this one free of charge for a test. And why did I ask for that? Because I had once some EL wires in one of my mailbags and then viewers told me that Elecro has a nice driver board. And really this looks like a nice driver board with beefy MOSFETs and stuff. It is eight channels. One, two, three, four. So I got four EL wires for the eight channels. What's this here? I don't know. It is completely filled up. So I searched now and found this H channel EL shield, which is this one here, which comes also with four different EL wires. And they say here, we need also a five volt inverter. And this is the five volt inverter. And the five volt inverter is this one here for EL wire. And it has an output voltage of 100 to 200 volt AC. So these small EL wires here need obviously quite a high voltage. So of course we want to check if it works. One thing I discovered is something which can be quite annoying. This seems to be the 110 volt output and you can plug it into the 5 volt output. The right place is here, more than 110 volt input. I think it would have been better to have a different um, connector here. Maybe they have some protection here, then I am unjust with them. But if not, if you can destroy it with this 110 volt, then it's probably not a very good idea. They provided cables with two different connectors, one for the board and one for the EL wire. So I connect it now this inverter to my multimeter and now I connect 5 volts. And it produces around 200 volt AC, which is what we need. But unfortunately, nothing happens. This might be because, and now I have to pay attention, it's now maybe 110 volts from here, somewhere on this board. And it might be that this is because it is an Arduino shield and maybe we need some sort of a sketch. And really, I found a sketch for my Arduino here. And I connected now the shield to the Arduino, uploaded the sketch, and now I switch off the light and I switch on the 110 volt. And now we hope that I do not kill my. Ah, uh, I don't do that. 110 volt and my PC. Uh, I don't like this too much. So I use a isolated USB connector. And now again, now I feel a little bit more secure. Aha, uh -huh. something happens. Now I switched off also the other light in the lab and now it's quite nice. Now we have everything as expected. Nice colors. It goes up to about 600 milliampere on 5 volt, which is uh, quite something. Now I switch on the light to see if we all if we still see something from the EL wires. At least we see them, so they are clearly brighter than the ones I had before. They are also thicker, and I think the others did not 
consume such a lot of energy. So this is a very nice device. So actually I got this 8 channel kit for $30, which includes the shield, the inverter, the wires and the adapters. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.